Right, we've literally just left the marina. It's too much going on in my head to uh, give an explanation of how it feels like. I just want to concentrate on getting out. This is just doing the lines. We are literally just going over there. Trust me, it's about a mile away, so I'll come back to you in a little bit. Listen to this. That is the sound of cicadas ashore. The water lapping on the reef that's just behind us. A gentle breeze coming in off the sea. There we go, first night at anchor and um, actually slept quite well but it's worth noting that soon after dumping the hook here uh, it pissed with rain and when I say it pissed with rain I mean it royally pissed with rain hardcore the whole afternoon well into the night in fact I think I went to sleep with it still pissing with rain it rained so hard that both Liz and I had a shower off the back of the boat and a decent shower at that too um, so what happens is, and this, as you know, this is happening all the time. The weather comes off of, off of the, uh, off of the land, and uh, creates these storms. And they happen most days, but yesterday was really, really hardcore. Anyway, the boat's held. Um, very tight bay, this one. We might move down the next round there, um, or we might go over to the other side. I'm wondering if we go the other side because there's a bit more protection. The reason for not anchoring on that side normally is that there's a, normally a prevailing north, uh, northwesterly or, or northeasterly swell that comes down through the South China Sea, and um, that's not happening at the moment. So it could be that we just go around the other side and actually just completely escape from this because when the weather does come through. Uh, if there is any wind, of course, look, you've got, well, you've basically got the whole, can you see that? You don't know where I'm pointing, some, somewhere down there. Um, there is quite a bit of uh, sea for the fetch to build up. So anyway, um, I need coffee, of course, before I can start articulating myself like, like a clever person. Sorry, I was supposed to comment on that amazing scenery behind me. This is the mountain range uh, called, not sure actually. Mount Kinabalu, by the way, is over there. We ha we can't see Mount Kinabalu at the moment, but uh, that's still an impressive mountain range. Nice, clear day uh, with very good visibility. With the mist coming off the mountains there, and in fact, when it was raining yesterday, just in this little bit here, inside there, you could see the mist, and uh, it's very atmospheric. Very atmospheric. And no one else around, of course, because no one is stupid enough to anchor on this coastline. How does it feel taking the anchor up for the first time oh. in ages? Well, it seems to be all right so far. Let's see what happens. We actually just had a friendly visit from the park ranger or a representative of the park rangers asking if we had permission to be here which of course we don't and he explained that there is an office in town you go to where they will well either give you permission or at least just tell you where you can and can't go I suspect that in reality we're probably not supposed to be anchoring here there's a big say what yeah She's asking if she should do 10 at a time, which is what we normally do when we weigh anchor, is to do 10 metres at a time, give the windlass a bit of a break, let the boat come round. Uh, anyway, so the whole of Gaia is actually surrounded by a red dotted line, and we are within that, so really we shouldn't be here. And you know, rules of rules, they make these national parks, or rather marine parks, for a reason. So, uh, the other thing is, is by the way, I checked the weather, and we've got a good, 20 knots or so coming in later on tonight uh, all the way through the night so we're pretty much exposed because it's coming from the southwest uh, so we're going to go round to somewhere called police bay policeman's bay 
policeman's ball. I don't know. Anyway, it's just outside the red dotted line. It's much closer to town as well, which is not necessarily ideal, but uh, we've got internet stuff to do. Yep, just because we're at Anchor doesn't mean we get a break from doing all the uh, filming and all that kind of malarkey. So uh, that would be another reason to go around there. Just shows you how protected that little language was that we were in. Uh, we've just come out into the open sea and it's pretty rolly here. There's quite a bit of a swell. So the fact that that was tucked in gave us quite a bit of protection, but of course we have to move. So we're now heading around the top of Gaia. Well, I'll be honest, uh, these kind of conditions are actually more scary, I think, than being stuck out at sea in 30 knots of wind, because when you're out at sea, you have no obstructions to hit, of course, in theory. Uh, the situation we're in at the moment, as you might be able to see by the moving horizon behind me, is that it's really rolly, really rolly, no wind, and we're coming round a headland in 35 metres of water. If anything were to happen right now with the engine, it wouldn't be a very pleasant situation, would it? What would you do? You could try and stick the sails out, but uh, the movement of the uh, swell and also we've got a good knot of current pushing us up as well that uh, would push us onto Gaia, the top of Gaia which is just here. Anyway, we're almost over the top now so fingers crossed. A couple of little boats out there fishing, probably hiding from the uh, marine park uh, guy who came around and ticked us off. By the way, I should mention, just before anyone mentions it, we did know that we were in a national park. Um, it's clearly shown on the chart. There's a red dotted line which goes all the way around Gaia and uh, we were inside that so uh, we shouldn't really have been doing it anyway but there we go. Nice, nice first night. Can you hear that? I'm not sure if you can. That is a cacophony of sound. It's horrendous. So basically on the other side of this isthmus is a big fishing village uh, which is facing south and because it's Saturday, Sunday, they I guess there's a little walkway that they can cut through the uh, forest there and then they use this beach as their party beach and as you can hear it sounds like they're having a lot of fun we were going to go kayaking, but uh, I think we're going to wait until Monday when they all go back to work. Anyway, that's the least of our worries though. Last night we were hit by a huge squall. And when I say huge squall, I mean this thing at one point ha actually stretched the entire length of Malaysia Borneo. So that's talk we're talking hundreds of miles. This huge front came through. What was quite interesting to watch, because we've just got internet connection here, we're able to look at the weather radar. And so this front was moving from the southeast towards the northwest, literally parallel to the coast. But as it was doing that, the wind was kind of whipping up from the south. And when it approached to this area here in Kotakina Blue, it actually became cyclonic. So it was doing this. So at 2.33 in the morning, uh, the wind, which was predicted to come from the sort of south-southwest, was actually coming round to the west, which is over there. Fortunately, uh, we're pretty secure here. There was absolutely no fetch, but uh, as I looked over to the west around there, I could see the sea state, the breaking waves over there. Uh, Esper was swinging around, and uh, you know, in those situations, even though we're holding tight, I tend to stay on anchor watch anyway, so that's what I did. But as a consequence, this morning we've noticed there's a few, I'm gonna turn around this way so you can't hear so much noise. Uh, there are a few little jobs we've got to tend to. And the first one is a little leak in the top hatch up on the foredeck, uh, which we had thought was um, the rubber seal, 
which was sort of vulcanizing and letting in water but actually it's the um it's the frame itself so nothing that a bit of silicone can't sort out in the short term so we've solved that uh, the other more worrying issue though are our big solar panels so we've got the two solar panels on the sides these two 40 watt panels that we flip up and 99 percent of the time they stay uh, horizontal they're held up by two rods and these rods are screwed into place and normally that holds them fast but on the starboard side one of those rods has lost its little wing nut screw so we're actually only securing it by one rod at three o'clock in the morning i noticed the solar panel was actually up like this and the wind had got underneath it and was trying to force the solar panel upwards into a vertical position so i've really got to find a little bolt to screw into the holder that holds that rod in place just so it's secured from both ends. I uh, don't want to repeat of that. Um, yeah, interesting, isn't it? You come somewhere here like here, apart from the music, beautifully tranquil, just, you know, nothing here except nature. Um, and then you get the flip side of nature at three o'clock in the morning and uh, it was quite something. We were speaking to quite a few people in the marina and they were saying that when the wind came round to the west, uh, they really got it in the marina um, the boats bouncing off the docks and uh, if you remember there's a big old uh, Korean boat that's out at anchor outside the marina and apparently that was dragging fortunately it has a tug tied next to it and the tug was able to pull it back into position but it shows you the ferocity ferociousness of some of these squalls that come through here and it was sustained for hours another little kayak today um, we're just having a discussion as to which way we go there's a reef over there which Liz is keen to go to but I was saying let's go over to the resort where we can hopefully paddle under the, the, uh, the houses the chalets and maybe I think there's possibly a little lagoon we can go into not a lagoon a sort of mangrove up a little mangrove estuary I don't know anyway I won that's the way we're going Well, this is very exciting. Two minutes in and Liz has seen a turtle. Apparently it swam underneath her kayak towards Esper. Curious to know what these guys are doing. He's towing a little cage on the back there. Obviously fishing for something. Don't know what. Ah, oh, crab! Crab, yeah, look at that. <laughs> So this guy's just casting a little line off of his uh, front of his boat. Have you caught anything? Yeah. Any fish? Yeah. yeah? Good man. So that was Zumat, he said, his name was. And I think, I think that's the guy we saw dropping the net around Esper last night. And I said we'd go and see what he uh, has caught. But I, I think he's left his net down there. I haven't seen him pull it up this morning. So he's obviously just hanging around here. He didn't leave his net last night, he stayed with it, with a little flashing light by his boat, so he obviously slept on board, and he's uh, leaving it out for the day, meanwhile casting a line off the back to catch things off his boat. Liz, by the way, um, is not feeling comfortable about fishing at the moment, because of the whole Millie thing, it's bringing back lots of memories of Millie, obviously Liz and Millie used to fish together, so she's yet to bring herself to cast a line over the side of the boat, but hopefully that will happen with time. Anyway, let's go and see if we can see some turtles. Well, that was a nice little encounter. We just met Carl and Stephanie, who run the resort and also the 
uh, Nautical Research Centre. So it wasn't the building that we were looking at. That's actually the staff's quarters and canteen area. And uh, the research centre is attached to the uh, resort. However, it is all closed, unfortunately. It's not financially viable for them to open it up for the few guests that would come and visit. So they've just uh, got a skeleton crew running to keep it up, up and running. Uh, but interesting chat to these guys. Very, very welcoming. And they said we can join them for dinner if we want to when the staff go and have their food. As you might be able to see, I'm now right next to the resort. And uh, we're actually inside the Marine National Park. So remember I was talking about this red dotted line that delineates the inside of the Marine National Park and outside. Uh, this is now falls within it, uh, which is why this place is called the Guyana Eco Resort. There is a research centre which is just based down there. It is closed, unfortunately, which is a shame because they have a seafood restaurant here and we were very interested to go and check out the at the research centre as well. I'm hoping they're okay with us paddling into their territory. They've got a kind of uh, breakwater, well, a fishing net that runs all the way around, I guess, defining exactly where their territory is. And then somewhere down there, I think, is, we've got a swimming pool, but I doubt we'll be able to use that. We've got the sea, after all. Um, but I thought I'd uh, just go and have a little cruise around and see what's around the corner. into the mangrove proper now. One of the things that uh, Carl, the manager of the marina, sorry, the resort, uh, who, by the way, comes from Welling Garden City, believe it or not, which is just up the road where I come from, although he did move to Spain when he was four, so I don't think he remembers much about it. Um, but he was saying, just like us in the marina, how during lockdown nature has taken over. And one of the things that uh, he's been seeing and hearing a lot of wild boar and uh, occasionally the locals do catch them and barbecue them. Um, but, and then I can hear something in the mangroves traipsing through the roots of the mangroves. I have no idea what it is. Do I go and investigate? Uh, and as we cycle, cycle, come on Jamie, wake up. When we kayak through these uh, roots of the mangroves, every now and then you see storks and herons flying out from their nests. Um, but I think this could be the entrance into the mangrove proper, so I'm going to have a little sneaky peek in here. The other things I forgot to mention that Carl said he'd seen was proboscis monkeys, which he said is not something they see that often. But again, because of the lockdown and the lack of tourism, they're coming more towards the water's edge. I don't know if I can hear them, but very strange popping, creaking, cracking noises as the, uh, I guess as the mangrove expands. We're on a falling tide at the moment, so as the water runs out, so the roots are going to be moving and they make these incredible sounds. Surprisingly deep here though. No, it's not. I think it's time to turn around. If you enjoy our videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Moaning. As you may or may not be able to see, it is early and I think this needs a quick explanation. We're heading back to the marina. Nothing uh, particularly uh, dramatic. It's just that we have a meeting scheduled uh, with uh, a guy called Sasley and with Alvin. Uh, we haven't, we've, I think we've alluded to this once and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it when I've woken up and when we get there and when we get to the meeting where we'll, we will re reveal, we will reveal, oh, 